Hi, Gary Wilkerson here, and we are coming down to the last of our 21 days together as we're doing these daily devotionals during this time where many of us are required to uh, stay at home. And that is about to be lifted here soon, and we're about to enter into a new phase. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've been thinking about a lot lately, and I think it's important for me to share with you, is how, and please don't hear this as an accusation, this is more my own stuff as much as anybody else's, is how insufficient the answer the church had to the crisis. The crisis was grave and our answer was light. Again, speaking for myself, I think I spoke more towards helping people overcome fear. I spoke more towards, uh, hold on, you can make it. And I didn't really speak to the deeper issues of the things of God. That has to do with understanding the very nature and character of God, knowing his attributes. Um, back in the 1800s and even earlier, Men like Jonathan Edwards and others, when they, when they began to preach the gospel, they spoke uh, about certain attributes of of God: His justice, His holiness, even His wrath, His judgment. All, all of these things were integral to that. And then there was a sort of a paradigm shift from that, a pendulum swing, uh, to where the other attributes of God were highlighted, and those other ones were seen as almost like, oh, that's somebody who might be legalistic, or that's. Those attributes are somebody who might study the Old Testament and the prophets more than they would be studying Jesus in the New Testament. And so there was a shift and the attributes of God became highlighted were mercy and grace and kindness and love and long-suffering. All of these are God, so who would dare say any of them are not valued or to be highly esteemed? Who would say that, not, who would say that any of these are not worthy of our highest adoration and expression of worship and praise to God for who he is in his totality, in his fullness, in his oneness, the I am of God. And yet we, in each of our generations, seem to select certain ones. And in the generation we're living in, we want to speak about his love and his mercy and grace as well. We should and continue to do so. But if we're leaving off the, the wrath of God, the judgment of God, the justice of God, the, the, the holiness of God, the power of God, uh, then we are missing part of the nature and character of God, then we are missing things in our own life, missing things in our own heart. We become whole as we see the wholeness of God, the fullness of God. We become full uh, of the Spirit only when we see the fullness of the Spirit being revealed in all the attributes of God. I would encourage you to take a look at your favorite attributes of God. I would suggest, uh, I, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if for most of us it would be his love and his mercy and his forgiveness and his grace. And, and then take a look at the ones that are missing in your life. The ones that you tend, that I tend to have the most affection for are probably the ones that I need in my life, but maybe looking at the other ones that I don't have the same kind of uh, attraction towards are probably the ones that I need even more. And I would say that is the same for this generation when affected by a situation like we're in, whether it be 9-11 and there was the terrorist attack or uh, this now 20 years later, are we as a church prepared to speak to the gravitas of the situation around us? Are, are, are we there to speak, uh, are we capable of speaking the weightiness of God? Or are we just giving sort of therapeutic answers to a culture who's in crisis, a culture who's in fear, a culture who's troubled in soul? And I am all for that. The pastoral part of my heart is for the concern for the, the, the troubled soul. But God is after something more than just causing someone to feel a little bit better about themselves or their situations. He, situation. He is about letting himself be known and glorified and exalted and praised and given the honor that is due because he knows that when our life is centered around him, that is the best life we could possibly have, not a life of materialism or fame or fortune or popularity or a lot of followers on Facebook or whatever it might be that floats your boat. Uh, but the thing that God is after in your life for your good and his highest glory is that he might become known, revered, honored, esteemed. He can only be fully esteemed when we fully know him. We can only fully know him when we look at all of his attributes in, in totality and in fullness. And to understand that these, these attributes are not like us. We have certain things uh, exuding out of us. So I'm Gary Wilkerson, but I have some love but at other times, not so much. It moves back and forth. And I have some grace, but not so much. And I have some justice, but sometimes it moves back and forth. And I'm merciful when I should be justful. And, and I'm moving in, in wrath and anger, uh, the anger of, of not of man, hopefully, but of God you know, towards uh, things that I should have other attitudes towards. So I'm always moving back and forth. 
God is unchanging in his attributes and his, his attributes are one. He is, he is, he is, that's why he says, I am. I'm not a little bit of love, but then at other times there's the wrath and justice. Um, everything God does is, is in totality. So when he brings his wrath, it's because he loves his creation and wants to protect it and guide it. When he's bringing forth his, his mercy, it's not lacking justice in it. He shows mercy in a just way. That's what the whole cross situation was about, that he could show mercy and grace and yet not diminish his justice. So therefore, the, Jesus paid the penalty for our sins on the cross. You begin to see when you start thinking about things like this, there is a lot of depth to the character, nature, and attributes of God. And that is what we are meant to preach. That is what we are meant to uh, speak from our pulpits. That is what our, our churches are meant to be about Nothing lighter, nothing um, trivial, nothing uh, the trinkets of our world. It meant God's thing, the things of God are meant to be spoken of uh, with the highest of esteem and honor of the God that we love and serve. Uh, I pray that you would take a look, even today, even after you're done listening to this, just take a look, maybe even write down on a, on a little piece of paper, here's the things that I really spend my time thinking about God or underlining in my Bible. My verses are all about mercy or grace. Um, and then do a study of the opposite, not the opposite attributes, but the other attributes of God that are you are less inclined to look at. If you're more of the sort of uh, justice and, and the wrath of God and judgments coming type of person, then take some time to look at his love and his mercy. Uh, you'll find that you'll grow. Uh, the Bible says that, uh, that uh, blessed is the man who knows his God. And I want you to know him more, in, especially in times like this where we have an opportunity to do so. God bless you. Grace and peace to you. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye now.